सब्सक्राइब कीजिए रोशन दुरानी चैनल को लेटेस्ट रिसर्च पेपर बुक्स पब्लिकेशन और फार्मा अपडेट के वीडियो को सबसे पहले देखने के लिए बेल आओ तो कैसे हो आप लोग आई होप कि सब घर पे सेफ होंगे अभी हम देख रहे हैं वेबिनार सीरीज जो 15 मई से 17 मई तक हुई है जिसे ऑर्गेनाइज किया है दादा साहेब बालपंडे कॉलेज ऑफ फार्मेसी बेसा नागपुर महाराष्ट्र इंडिया इन, इसके एमिनेंट स्पीकर है डॉक्टर सुधाकर गरड फ्रॉम यू डॉक्टर प्रशांत खरकर फ्रॉम मुंबई डॉक्टर पीयूष शनकर फ्रॉम मुंबई डॉक्टर राहुल मनमोड़े फ्रॉम यूएसए आज हम देख रहे हैं ड्रग रिपर्पसिंग फॉर कोविड 19 एंड अपडेट जिसे प्रेजेंट कर रहे हैं डॉक्टर प्रशांत खरकर फ्रॉम मुंबई डॉक्टर प्रशांत खरकर तो ये प्रोफेसर है इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ केमिकल टेक्नोलॉजी आई मुंबई इनका बारे में डिटेल देख लेते हैं देखिए ये इनका लिंकडिंग का अकाउंट है प्रोफाइल है ये देखिए इनके एक्सपीरियंस ये रिसर्च साइंटिस्ट भी थे एजुकेशन ये सर्टिफिकेट है लाइसेंस है ये स्किल एंड एंडर्समेंट है इनो इनके 42 पब्लिकेशन है ये देखिए तेरा हॉनर एंड अवार्ड है सेवन प्रोजेक्ट है दो पैटर्न भी है इनके देखिए अभी हम कुछ मेरे वीडियो देखेंगे जो मैंने बनाए हुए हैं ये देखिए ये इंट्रोडक्शन का वीडियो है ये कुछ रिसर्च पेपर के ऊपर मैंने वीडियो बनाई है ये देखिए कुछ फार्मा जॉब के रिलेटेड बनाई है कुछ कोर्स और लर्निंग के ऊपर भी बनाई है कुछ कोविड के ऊपर भी बनाई है ये चार कोम की सीरीज बनाई है तो दोस्तों अगर आपने अब तक मेरे चैनल को सब्सक्राइब नहीं किया है तो जरूर सब्सक्राइब करना ये देख सकते हैं आप मैं इतने सारे वीडियो आपके लिए बनाता हूँ तो आपके सपोर्ट के लिए आपको सब्सक्राइब करना ही पड़ेगा अगर आपको कोई भी एक तो भी वीडियो आपका काम का है तो प्लीज सब्सक्राइब कीजिए और सपोर्ट कीजिए आपका और ये बेल आइकन को प्लीज दबाए ताकि आपको नोटिफिकेशन मिलता रहे चलिए देखते हैं वीडियो को पूरा देखें गुड इवनिंग Uh, uh, webinar from this webinar series on the covid opportunities and challenges today uh, we have a very eminent speaker with us in the form of dr prashant harkar who is presently working as a professor of medicinal chemistry at a prestigious institute uh, institute of chemical technology uh, ufd city mumbai he is an expert on computational and experimental drug repurposing and today uh, he will be delivering on the same topic that is a drug repurposing uh, he is having a rich experience in the drug discovery and preclinical development of anti cancer and cancer stem cell inhibitors he has been involved in the development of uh, investigational new drug belonging to cancer stem cells uh, inhibitors category specifically against the breast and uh, prostate cancer Uh, he is presently an uh, inventor on seven patent application and he is also a registered patent agent he has guided almost uh, five phd uh, students uh, or fellows and uh, greater than uh, uh, say 25 pg students so far he has published uh, more than 60 research paper in the reputed international journals and uh, presented uh, uh, more than uh, 50 abstracts in the conference of uh, international reputes such as uh, uh, journal research conference uh, acs meeting etc uh, i i'll be glad to share with you that he is a recipient of a grant uh, almost around 2 uh, crores from the various national funding agencies and industry he is a recipient of uh, indian national science academy award 
for international uh, exchange in 2015 uh, a recipient of a newton bhabha research links uh, workshop award in 2019 he is a member of a national and international professional societies various societies he is a grant reviewer on infectious diseases he is a reviewer of a prestigious peer reviewed international journals such as science transnational medicines journal of medicinal chemistry and european journal of medicinal chemistry and uh, he will be providing uh, one link on his uh, uh, ppt so that you will read more of uh, him so this is all about uh, his uh, biography with me and now i'll hand over uh, the charge to prashant over to you prashant sir okay thank you so much now i'll just share uh, my screen Uh, if the hosts uh, can help me uh, sharing uh, my screen yeah okay i'll share yes, uh, okay can you see um, see the screen and uh, hear my voice yeah clearly yeah. Yeah. okay perfect you can proceed so i will okay perfect i'll start with my um, presentation so the title of my talk is uh, recent update on drug repositioning campaigns um, for covid 19 now uh, drug repositioning and drug repurposing a uh, lot of people use them uh, uh, okay um, but then i uh, my main focus would be on drug repurposing uh, of course and part of it is repositioning and i'll uh, share with you um, what is the uh, difference between repositioning and repurposing although uh, there is the boundary between the two terms is uh, quite obscure so before i um, actually start my presentation i would uh, like to acknowledge the organizers of the webinar series for giving me a chance to uh, talk about drug repurposing and drug repositioning and of course uh, the scientific community which made uh, this uh, talk possible uh, by various contributions in the form of a drug repurposing hypothesis and various drug repurposing uh, campaigns okay uh, so first uh, like i mentioned uh, drug repurposing and um, of course uh, the drug repositioning the terms um, uh, first i'll talk about uh, drug repurposing and the related terms so in uh, okay in brief uh, drug repurposing uh, that's nothing but studying a small molecule or a biologic approved by the uh, fda food and drug administration uh, to treat one disease or condition to see if it is safe and effective for treating other diseases so in a way uh, drug repurposing is nothing but finding new uses for old uh, or rather i would say approved or existing drugs and then the related term uh, which i talked about and which is also part of the title of my presentation that is drug repositioning Now, as far as drug repositioning is concerned, um, the uh, sildenafil or Viagra is a classic example of drug repositioning. Sildenafil was being studied for its uh, coronary vasodilatory effect (PD5 inhibitor) effect, uh, where they found uh, during phase two trials that uh, it was not uh, that efficacious. But then, uh, some of the uh, participants of clinical trials, some of the subjects. they uh, complained uh, or rather they uh, brought to the notice of the investigator this unusual side effect of phenyl reaction and that's how they repositions uh, they reposition the uh, sildenafil or viagra from its original indication that is coronary vasodilator or uh, uh, kind of an anti hypertensive drug to uh, erectile dysfunction um, remedy so that's basically uh, the difference uh, you know a big difference between drug repurposing and drug repositioning like i said i'll be talking about drug repurposing uh, campaigns and drug repositioning campaigns as well so that uh, you know everything is covered another very uh, important and related term is drug rescue drug rescue it refers to research using small molecules and biologics that previously were used in studies but not further developed and submitted for fda approval maybe uh, these are the drugs or these are the candidates which were um, kind of underwent attrition in either phase 2 or uh, phase 3 trials and never uh, actually became drugs 
So these shared molecules uh, at times, uh, I, mean, uh, if, I mean, I'm sure you know, every uh, drug which comes out of uh, out in the market, there are like 100 preclinical candidates and then uh, at least um, you know, equal number, maybe 50 to 75 uh, molecules enter in phase one, around 20 to 30 in phase two, and in phase three, and then one becomes the drug. So that's how, uh, you know, if you see the, the, the number of drugs which essentially um, are on the shelves or which uh, never became drug, that number is huge, probably uh, 10 to 20 times of uh, all the approved drugs which we have in the market today. So it's always a good idea to revisit these drugs. I mean, they underwent attrition because of some issue, maybe lack of efficacy, maybe some toxicity, but at times uh, these drugs are revisited or these candidates are revisited for indications where toxicity is not much of an issue, say something like anti-cancer indication or some situation like uh, what we are facing today, that is COVID-19, where uh, we desperately need a remedy uh, which essentially uh, is efficacious, right? Um, so in a way I would say, uh, this is relatively older concept, uh, both drug repurposing and drug repositioning. But recently, uh, it gained momentum, uh, of course, um, uh, in the present situation, owing to lack of therapeutic options. So whenever there is an unmet medical need, people resort to drug repositioning. This was the case when Ebola um, uh, appeared uh, back in 2014-15. This was the case in SARS uh, epidemic in 2002, uh, MERS epidemic in 2012. So anytime uh, there is an unmet medical need, people resort to uh, finding cures uh, using approved or known drugs. And that's where uh, this is a relatively older concept. But today uh, we are actually uh, in dire need of a drug which essentially can work and that's where drug rep repurposing is so much talked about. So uh, when we say uh, we are trying to use uh, an approved drug for a new indication, so that's where um, the uh, intellectual property comes in picture. So depending on whether the drug patent is already expired, as in the drug is very old, relatively old, at least 20 years old, or uh, whether the drug is a new one, uh, say something like uh, remdesivir for that matter. So in that case, uh, the IP protection always becomes an issue and that's where uh, this particular case of second use patenting becomes very, very important. Like uh, if some company wants to repurpose a drug, they would want to, of course, they would uh, spend a lot of money and efforts to conduct clinical trials. Maybe they'll start with um, phase two studies or directly with phase three, depending on the drug involved and eventually uh, you know, uh, conduct clinical trials, submit it to uh, FDA, the data submission to FDA, and FDA will give permission to market that drug. But unless that drug is patented uh, for this second use, uh, anybody can use that uh, drug as such. And that's where uh, the efforts and the time which the, uh, which the company has spent uh, that goes uh, down the drain. And that's where uh, obtaining a new use patent uh, that uh, you know, that actually requires hard biological data. And of course, this is not possible in India for sure because uh, the Patents uh, Act 1970, Section 3, 3D, uh, and of course the uh, related sections of Section 3, subsections of Section 3, they do not allow uh, anyone to uh, protect or get patent protection for something which is already known. But then outside in India, like say US or other uh, countries, uh, the second use patenting is allowed. And in fact, uh, I share one instance uh, with me uh, towards the end of the presentation. So if you want to repurpose a drug, say for COVID-19, you definitely will need um, a solid data, uh, biological data to prove your case. Without that, nobody will entertain uh, your case. Right? Uh, but then uh, when it comes to patenting system, if you uh, happen to read patents, uh, a lot of times uh, patents don't really uh, reveal uh, you know, much uh, even at the outset, because there is no set format uh, as such in, in terms of what, how much data should be revealed and how much should not. Say, unlike um, uh, the journal articles where uh, you have to reveal, uh, you know, the data in the particular format, but people misuse the patenting system, and that's how uh, we don't really uh, see data, much of data, particularly say biological data for that matter, in patents which have been filed um, at times. Uh, and again, uh, when it comes to how much data is needed, um, that strictly depends um, on the case. In the sense, uh, it, it differs from uh, case to case and FDA will have their own demands 
depending on what exactly is uh, under consideration, right? Uh, but then nonetheless, uh, extraordinary claims require uh, extraordinary data. And that's where uh, one is poised to do a lot of data uh, building or data generation before um, you uh, go for second use patenting. And that's where, uh, like I mentioned, managing IP is a very, very important um, aspect of drug repurposing business. Yesterday only I was reading one news where uh, this company um, from Pune, Novali Pharma, they have filed uh, or they have applied to Indian FDA for uh, permission uh, for phase three trials of a known drug. Uh, and apparently uh, they have picked up this drug maybe from in-house exercise or uh, some literature data, but then they're tight-lipped uh, as far as revealing the name of the drug because they fear uh, the moment they, uh, in a way, uh, tell that name, uh, people will rush to the medicals and buy those, uh, buy that medicine, and then, uh, you know, uh, there will be a havoc, which in a way partly is correct, uh, but then uh, they have their own um, reasons for doing that. But then we'll come back to that. But nonetheless, the uh, managing IP is an important aspect. Um, one way around this roadblock is to strike a deal with the holder of the composition of matter patent. This is the way uh, Remdesivir uh, thing is happening. Remdesivir production under compulsory licensing. Now they have, uh, I think they've listed five or six uh, Indian uh, vendors or Indian companies who can uh, produce uh, or synthesize, manufacture Remdesivir in India and uh, probably supply to Indian patients as well as uh, to the rest of the world. Uh, most of most of the uh, world actually. So here these companies they have um, uh, you know, they'll be paying royalty to they'll they'll be getting uh, rights from uh, GI lead uh, from or delayed uh, from uh, for making remdesivir so something like that. So this exactly uh, is per perfect example. So uh, this particular table uh, actually talks about um, a very important aspect of um, so called uh, different uh, ways by which you can um, re uh, purpose uh, a drug, uh, the first one, and uh, when it comes to patenting system, novelty is one of the foremost criteria, and uh, these different uh, permutations actually talk about how novelty goes from, uh, say, low to uh, the highest uh, phase. So the first part, part is reformulation or line extension. So where the indication is same, target is same, uh, novelty is obviously low because you're not doing anything new. You are probably just reformulating it maybe from injection to oral or some other uh, vice versa. Uh, in case of on-target repurposing, the indication is different, but the target is same, right? So the novel is some novelty. There's something like, um, I would say uh, an example would be metformin. Metformin is a very safe, uh, anti-diabetic drug insulin sensitizer, but then uh, metformin, uh, it's off-label uh, uses for uh, cancer. Many oncologists use it. So in a way, indication is different, but apparently uh, metformin is doing the same thing what it is uh, supposed to do, or it, it is interacting with uh, more or less same set of proteins to uh, show the anti-cancer effect. In case of off-target repurposing, uh, say something like the indication is same, uh, but the target is different. Uh, so in that case, novelty is definitely high. Uh, and then the, the, the best possible scenario where the indication is different, target is different, and then a novelty is the highest. So in this case, I would say uh, hydroxychloroquine can come uh, under both of these categories of off or target repurposing, but then we can debate on that. So in a way, when it comes to second use patenting, the most important thing is uh, the novelty because, uh, but then nonetheless, uh, it becomes very difficult in India to uh, do something like this, but you can do it uh, outside India for sure, right? So then uh, coming to um, the drug repurposing, uh, there has been too much of drug repurposing these days. Um, uh, I would say, um, an interesting thing is uh, even uh, Pintia uh, means uh, as what drug repurposing is because the moment you uh, put on news, uh, you will uh, hear about hydroxychloroquine, you will hear about uh, remdesivir, and then there are many, many other uh, drugs uh, which are uh, you know kind of uh, under investigation for drug repurposing for COVID-19. Of course, uh, thanks to all of our media guys for uh, in a way making hydroxychloroquine immortal in the history of humanity. Believe me, um, uh, hydroxychloroquine, I have been going through, uh, you know, um, like someday I'm so excited. Uh, oh, okay, hydroxychloroquine is showing some efficacy. The next day it says uh, it's dumb drug, it doesn't do anything. Uh, and then suddenly you hear remdesivir and then uh, others, uh, they're not really uh, working. And then hydroxychloroquine is working. 
so there has been uh, it has been a roller coaster um, uh, ride for uh, hydroxychloroquine and other drugs because every passing day uh, you hear a new thing about covid 19 because a lot of people i mean nobody knows exactly uh, with uh, with very surety that uh, what exactly happens in covid 19 some people are saying that now anticoagulant should be there some people are saying anti inflammatory should be there some people are saying this some people are saying that so it's uh, it's really uh, you know and and this will continue for probably next one year or so uh, but then uh, this is where the real opportunity lies um, because drug repurposing is our best bet at the uh, present moment uh, for covid 19 or uh, till a vaccine is developed but again even if the vaccine is developed we don't know uh, whether that how long that vaccine would be uh, useful because i remember uh, like in us uh, every year they will have a new flu vaccine uh, and then you have to take shots every year because the flu virus uh, mutates uh, so fast that a vaccine which was useful uh, efficacious last year uh, is not at all useful next year so that's where uh, probably this is going to be the case with covid 19 as well but then uh, it's too early to say um, so then uh, that brings us to a very uh, important question who can repurpose drugs Uh, well, uh, I have. Um, I mean, I'm very. Uh, I'm being very uh, optimistic. Um, it has to be uh, you, me, or anyone who is trained in pharmaceutical and medical sciences, uh, for that matter. Of course, so you cannot uh, expect Penta to repurpose uh, a drug uh, for you uh, or for us. But of course, uh, we being in the uh, very uh, relevant field, uh, pharmaceutical as well as medical sciences, we do have um, all the uh, training expertise and uh, legal to do uh, so-called repurposing. So then, uh, uh, once we talk about that, like uh, okay, we can you me uh, can do repurposing. But then uh, another important question pops up: How do I contribute to drug repurposing and help humanity? Because that is what is most important at this point of time and um, so i have few thoughts uh, about this uh, before we plunge into uh, the drug repurposing campaigns so of course the first most important thing is compassion uh, and almost all my talks wherever i uh, go and if it is about research i uh, you know somehow get this word in um, discussion compassion so it's like uh, you know trying to know uh, trying to understand uh, other sorrows uh, you know like putting oneself in somebody else's situation and trying to work around that uh, so uh, you know to be a good researcher you have to be compassionate and you also have passion in compassion so you have to be passionate as a researcher without which uh, nothing is possible and of course the, the next most important component would be willingness uh, and an insatiable uh, curiosity for science You can't expect somebody who is not curious uh, about science to do uh, a wonder job. Uh, possible? That's probably not possible. Uh, the next thing would be um, voracious searching of the scientific literature. Like I said, uh, with every passing day, uh, what uh, somebody said a week ago is not true anymore. Um, so things change so fast, and the COVID-19 is uh, COVID-19 literature is a classic example. So you got to read uh, a lot, a lot, and a lot. and learn from uh, the example cited the approach adopted by those uh, guys who came up with some very interesting uh, uh, you know uh, drug repurposing uh, hypothesis and of course the thought process behind that like i said a uh, lot of things are happening uh, the complications of covid-19 somebody is saying that covid-19 doesn't uh, uh, survive uh, its passage through uh, say stomach somebody is saying that it's Uh, so it's it's available or it can it can be found in uh, fecal matter small intestine and what not so uh, we have to really read read and read without which we won't be able to do a job uh, a proper job then comes the next thing ability to connect the dots ability to ask difficult difficult questions and of course their pursuit so when i say ability to connect the dots as in uh, we have lot of like we have been bombarded with so much of information uh, and then we are experts so we have some knowledge of our field uh, medical field pharmaceutical field but then unless we able we are able to connect the dots uh, we won't be able to come up with something very interesting like when it comes to drug repurposing hypothesis or in general uh, you know the thought process behind uh, drug repurposing uh, and of course the ability to ask difficult questions as in uh, unless we ask difficult questions uh, which probably uh, the clinicians wouldn't uh, want to hear Uh, 
uh, or something like that. Uh, we, we and of course uh, asking difficult questions is one thing, but then uh, pursuing those uh, the, their pursuit is also very important. Finding answers to those difficult questions uh, is also an important uh, aspect. And the most important of all these would be collaboration. Um, uh, without collaboration with uh, like-minded people uh, and of course uh, people with complementary expertise, a chemist, with a biologist, with a pharma pharmaceutical scientist, and what not, uh, nothing is possible uh, in today's uh, highly competitive world. Uh, but of course, when it comes to uh, collaboration, two people are involved or many people are involved, then it becomes more of a people management. A lot of people have their hidden agendas. So if you really want to contribute to uh, a, novel, a noble cause like this, uh, you have to have a collaboration without hidden agendas. Only one desire to make a difference uh, without any material expectations. Like I believe Amir Khan, uh, when he says that, Bache, uh, kamyab bano, uh, baki sab to, uh, you know, it will follow you, uh, you know, like money, fame, name, uh, uh, kabil bano, that's, that's more important. So that's exactly what I mean. Without any material expectations, eventually you will get, uh, you know, if you have something uh, concrete. Uh, this is very interesting uh, thing. This is from a paper, a nature paper. Uh, I will be uh, showing you uh, this paper, uh, at least the title of this paper afterwards. But this is uh, the last part of uh, this particular uh, nature paper where these uh, people from UCSF, uh, University of California, San Francisco, they have uh, written this paper in nature and they have found out that at least uh, around 60 to 70 drugs uh, they have uh, you know, kind of proposed that these um, actually are able to interact with uh, like the SARS-CoV-2 proteins which are interacting with human proteins and uh, these drugs could be potentially useful for curbing um, the uh, journey of SARS-CoV-2. So I want, uh, I want you guys to read uh, the, the highlighted, the blue portion. It says, the authors have not filed for patent protection in the SARS-CoV-2 host interactions or the use of predicted drugs for treating COVID-19 to ensure all the information is freely available to accelerate the discovery of a treatment. Now for uh, a gesture like this, I can only salute these guys. These are very high profile researchers if they can think like that, uh, who are we to even, uh, you know, hi, uh, thinking of even hiding what is uh, important or what comes to our mind. So this is how uh, big people are, uh, you know, great and they contribute to great research. I, I, I'm not saying that you go on uh, telling everything what you have, but these guys have uh, done a solid research and they have made it available to the world. Uh, just so uh, anybody and everybody in the world uh, can, you know, is able to uh, use this information and come up with a treatment. This is amazing. And in fact, if you see many of the clinical uh, trials which are uh, ongoing for a repurposed drug or for drug repurposing, they have some or the other clue from this particular paper. So this is uh, this is very, very interesting. And I, I just love these guys. So coming to uh, what about today's uh, agenda? Uh, I'm not going to tell you about hydroxychloroquine, remdesivir, uh, of course not, because you probably know more than me uh, by this time. Uh, maybe by attending uh, various webinars or reading uh, scientific literature or hearing news. So I'm not going to talk about uh, them. Uh, you already know about it. I'm also not going to talk about complicated ways for generating drug repurposing hypothesis. Like I said, it's not a, it's not an old concept. It's a, uh, I mean, it's not a new concept. It's a pretty old concept. There are uh, very systematic ways of doing it, which involves genomics, which involves systems biology. Uh, there are a lot of literature available. And uh, like I said, uh, last month I gave a very basic seminar on drug repurposing where I, uh, you know, uh, this, this re the, that presentation and today's presentation, I'm going to share, uh, I've requested the organizers to share both the presentations so that in case you are more interested in knowing those uh, complicated ways of drug repurposing, you possibly can uh, refer to the articles which are cited in that, uh, uh, in those presentations, in, in that presentation, and of course, in today's presentation as well. So I'm not going to talk about that as well. I'm going to talk about uh, not so hard drug repurposing campaigns. Uh, it's like uh, people are talking about hydroxychloroquine, remdesivir, chloroquine, and uh, galdesivir, and whatnot. Uh, but then I'm going to focus on not so hard drug repurposing. Like people are working silently. Uh, you might have seen these um, uh, things because everything is available on the internet, but uh, the media has not caught uh, media, the attention by media has not, these, these uh, campaigns did not really catch much of your media attention. So I'm going to talk about those. Uh, that is for uh, the, 
for understanding or for uh, making you aware of the thought process behind those campaigns and in a way to help you uh, uh, generate the uh, or in a way um, i would say motivate or inspire you to create that thought process in your mind so that uh, you yourself uh, can feel that even i can uh, contribute to drug repurposing campaigns believe me it's uh, it's it's going to be so this will probably um, learn uh, a lot uh, about uh, many new things uh, which you probably uh, don't know or you thought you would learn some day but this is the time where uh, you need to do that so there are the innumerable examples unprecedented opportunities available um, it's like mano to hai opportunities hai varna nahi hai somebody forwarded on whatsapp one um, uh, one text where um, one uh, anupam kher was um, Uh, going for he went for a uh, some shooting and then he saw less people uh, there so his ego got hurt and then uh, he started shouting at people uh, eventually um, uh, he saw amita bachan sitting in one corner then he said uh, amit ji aapko garmi nahi lagti uh, so then ami uh, amita bachan he uh, took his head out of the book and he said uh, मानो तो है वरना नहीं है सो इट इज सेम थिंग इफ यू थिंक देर आर अनप्रेसिडेंटेड और लॉर्ड अपॉर्चुनिटीज अदरवाइज देयर इज नथिंग फॉर यू देयर राइट सो जस्ट थॉट आई वुड कोड दिस ओके सो कमिंग बैक टू द सेलेक्ट फ्यू केसेस व्हिच आई बिलीव देयर आर नॉट सो हार्ड रीपोजीशनिंग कैंपेन्स बिलीव मी सम ऑफ दीस ड्रग्स यू प्रोबब्ली मेनी ऑफ यू प्रोबब्ली द स्टूडेंट्स एंड इवन सम ऑफ द टीचर्स you might not have heard uh, names of these drugs because some of these are too new and some are uh, still under development uh, but don't worry uh, there are some very interesting uh, examples as well which are so familiar to you so the first one is uh, inava cycling um, this particular drug this is the structure uh, now there are a lot of structures in the presentation but don't bother uh, because at times i want to make a connect with the uh, structure how is structure more important and how you can extend or generate the thought process by looking at the structure so uh, don't worry too much uh, about structure uh, so particularly uh, for this drug um, this is inava cycling uh, this was launched uh, two years ago um, in 2018 uh it acts by it's it's a tetracycline antibiotic if you see if you look at the structure it's a typical tetracycline antibiotic which acts by uh, the molecular mechanism is ribosome inhibitor and uh, this particular drug got a fast track designation because it is uh, extremely uh, useful for uh, treating intra abdominal um, infections as well as complicated urinary uh, tract infections for which it is still under phase 3 trials and it of course uh, because it's a tetracycline antibiotic it belongs to the antibacterial drug category and uh, this drug is also under um, uh, the study that uh, for anti coronavirus uh, effect and this is where uh, it gets more uh, interesting uh, the organization is uh, tetraphase pharmaceuticals which is a massachusetts based um, uh, company uh, in usa so uh, how did they um, come to this particular conclusion that uh, irava cycline uh, can be repurposed for covid 19 so they uh, basically um, they uh, uh, this particular company som uh, som innovation biotech which is a, a barcelona a spain based uh, drug repurposing company so they have transferred irava cycline right there like som biotech innovation biotech is developing uh, irava cycline for covid 19 so they have studied uh, this particular drug uh, at this university in south korea iwa iwa women's university um, and where they have found out that uh, this particular drug that is irava cycline uh, has got a potential usefulness for treating sars cov 2 uh, infection that is uh, covid uh, 19 um they have completed in vitro analysis and identified three drug candidates that can be potentially used to treat um uh, covid-19 irava cycline is one apart from that uh, there is another one prexacertib uh, which is a kinase inhibitor and cyanarin it's actually a nutraceutical i bet uh, at least 60% of you don't know um, uh, cyanarin what cyanarin is it's uh, it's a quinic acid um, Uh, derivative uh, ester of quinic acid with uh, i think caffeic acid um, it's 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 a nutraceutical you should see the structure and you will be amazed uh, to see and it's uh, it's it's present in one of the uh, foods uh, it's not we don't really use it in india but it is available um, I, i forgot the name but don't worry about it. so um, 
so they have partnered with this uh, uh, you know you know women's university in south korea for uh, covid 19 research and in, in in case if you are following drug repurposing campaigns a lot of people are going to south uh, korea for doing a lot of research uh, on covid 19 um, i i fail to understand the reason but it's just, uh, it's very interesting so the question is how did they uh, arrive at these particular three drugs um, so they uh, used an artificial intelligence based uh, screening technology uh, so my pro uh, that, that was used for discovering inhibitors of three cl protease which is one of the first protease which is required for processing of the uh, viral polypeptide which uh, it translates once um, uh, you know once it uh, once the genetic material enters uh, or gets entry uh, inside the host cell uh so three cl pro inhibitors are extremely important uh, for curbing the viral replication cycle and that's where uh, they use this artificial intelligence based technology to find out uh, these three compounds which potentially has got uh, you know anti covid 19 uh, effect and they have proved that with the help of uh, in vitro studies they also filed a patent application for method of use protection of three uh, compounds uh, globally So this is very very uh, interesting. So uh, essentially, they'll be able to develop these compounds, and uh, they are likely to start the clinical studies uh, very soon. I think IND has been filed, awaiting the approval. Uh, they are waiting for the approval from the FDA's. So the take-home message is they use uh, artificial intelligence and in vitro screening for repurposing and approved drugs. So uh, in a way, I would say if you have some uh, good idea, uh, you essentially can take help of uh, in vitro screening and. Uh, do exactly what they have done uh, but then of course uh, you have to generate that uh, ground breaking idea and which is not impossible or which is not difficult it's just uh, you have to be vigilant and read read and read so this was the first case uh, so then that uh, the next pertinent or rather most important question is will other ribosome inhibitors be effective as anti sars cov2 agents so this is an analogy like you see the one ribosome inhibitor is uh, useful as uh you know, protease inhibitors say, particularly belonging to tetracycline so very much it is possible that other tetracyclines could essentially be uh, useful for uh, say anti sars cov2 activity and this is where it gets interesting so you see some somebody has uh, proposed some hypothesis and then essentially uh, you just uh, you know extrapolate that thing to other members of that particular drug class or maybe chemical class so an example is uh, this uh, this particular drug antibacterial drug called uh, lefamulin which was introduced in uh, 2019 then uh, much familiar lorampenicol uh, which is an antibacterial drug very very old drug probably introduced in therapy uh, anti tubercular therapy or other antibacterial therapy for uh, quite some time ago in, i think late 1960s or so uh, the most important uh, aspect is if you read the nature paper which i was talking about uh, they have shown that lorampenicol uh, in a way is um, uh, associated with there's a connection of chloramphenicol with mitochondrial ribosomes uh, uh, the connection of mitochondrial ribosomes uh, of the host cell with the nsp8 that is non structural protein 8 of sars cov2 so potentially it is possible that chloramphenicol may uh, show uh, sars cov2 anti sars cov2 effect by interacting with nsp8 which is essential for uh, the virus uh, uh, survival inside the host cell and uh, oral replication so this is see, this is now uh, you know you 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 saw one uh, hypothesis and uh, you just extrapolated that thing so this is exactly what um, uh, i want to uh, say right so now uh, coming back to uh, an interesting um, Second example, clemastin, which is an anti-histaminic drug. Uh, the formulations are available in the market uh, with the name Cavigil, and then there are many other um, uh, brand names. So this is the uh, structure of clemastin. Very simple structure. Um, in the highest phase, uh, it was launched back in 1967. Very old drug, uh, still used today. Its molecular mechanism is, uh, of course, histamine H1 receptor antagonism. and another important thing is i want you to focus or highlight or note this particular word sigma non opioid intracellular receptor 1 that is sigma 1 uh, sigma r1 ligand we probably don't know whether it's a, it's an agonist or antagonist uh, but then um, this particular drug interacts very potently with uh, sigma r1 uh, like sigma r1 receptor and also with uh, sigma r2 with almost uh, equal uh, efficacy or uh, affinity uh 
So it is very, very interesting. It's an anti-Islamic drug, and uh, uh, this, these, these, uh, the, the Nature paper uh, very uh, prominently talks about clemastin uh, as a very promising drug uh, to be able to uh, inhibit SARS-CoV-2 by its ability to bind to sigma R1 uh, and R2 receptor. We probably don't know whether uh, you need more sigma R1 antagonism or ligand uh, affinity or more of sigma R2. Uh, but then, uh, nonetheless, uh, the compounds which are able to bind to sigma R1 ligands, they are able to show anti sars cov 2 um, affinity or activity. Uh, the very uh, important aspect is uh, these drugs uh, essentially, by virtue of their uh, high lipophilicity and this cationic nitrogen, essentially get accumulated inside the lysosome. Uh, when the virus enters inside uh, the endolysis, say early lysosome, endolysosome, uh, and uh, uh, lysosome. So this particular drug, uh, it uh, increases the pH of those uh, endolysosomes or late endosomes, and that essentially uh, uh, inactivates the proteases which are responsive, which are, uh, which are required for uh, cutting off the spike protein of the virus so that it can fuse with the uh, lysosomal membrane and get entry inside the cell. So this drug uh, prevents that particular uh, information, or it prevents that particular um, action. A lot of information is available of this effect, and there are many other drugs. In fact, hydroxychloroquine, for that matter, hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine uh, partly uh, act by this particular mechanism. And uh, there's a whole array of uh, a thought process or people uh, or school of thought which are uh, talking about sigma uh, R1 and R2 ligands as potential anti-SARS-CoV-2 uh, therapeutic. Um, so this is very, very interesting. And this is very close to, I mean, I have been very uh, following this uh, very uh, closely. Um, the organization is Novartis. And then there are, because this is such an old drug, uh, now there are other organizations which are developing this particular drug. So uh, coming back to, uh, like I was mentioning about clemastin's um, uh, affinity for sigma R1, the PKI is given here. Uh, that's uh, uh, close to uh, 100 uh, nanomolar or so for sigma R2. It's not very different. Her uh, channel uh, again, uh, it's a it's a low micromolar, less than uh, less than I, I would say less than 30 or so, uh, less than three micromolar. So it has uh, ability uh, or liability, her liability that is for the uh, torsion D points. Um, uh, I would say arrhythmia or cardiotoxicity, but then nonetheless, uh, it is still uh, useful. So this is the paper which I was talking about, uh, which talks about a source of two operation interaction map for targets uh, for drug repurposing. And I would uh, request all of you should uh, read this paper. Uh, it's available freely, as in uh, anyone can download it. You just need to uh, type these uh, words and you will be able to see it. So this particular uh, set of, uh, like the, the authors in this paper, they have uh, docked lemastine uh, into the sigma R1 ligand binding pocket. And then they have found out that it very nicely fits in there. There's another molecule that is a uh, plus pentazosin, which is like opioid analgesic or so. Uh, so this, uh, the cationic nitrogen is able to interact with the aspartate residue here, D126, that is aspartate 126. So uh, for these molecules, to be able to bind to sigma uh, receptor, it has to have, uh, or they have to have a cationic nitrogen, a nitrogen which can be cationic at physiological pH. And then uh, these two, um, I would say, uh, aromatic centers. So that, that's exactly why I was talking about uh, the stru how structures uh, can give you uh, an information uh, about these uh, so-called um, drug repurpose, generating repurposing uh, hypothesis. Another interesting example is ifenprodil, um, which is uh, which is again um, it's a drug which was introduced back in uh, 1973. This is uh, this is the structure. I, I don't know if you know about this drug. Uh, uh, so again, if you see here, there is a cationic nitrogen. There are aromatic rings here uh, at a particular distance. So there is a typical pharmacophore. This drug is originally an alpha adrenal receptor antagonist and also uh, an MDA receptor antagonist, uh, which binds to the uh, NRB2, that is subunit um, B of an MDA receptor. But apart from that, it's also a very potent uh, sigma R1 ligand. And uh, people have been studied uh, this particular drug for anti-COVID um, activity. So this is, uh, 
this turns out to be very very interesting now if you see uh, okay, it is used for peripheral vascular disorders such as occlusive arterial disease or brain ischemia uh, and uh, another important use of this drug is obviously the acute uh, respiratory distress syndrome which is a typical symptom of uh, SARS cov or covid 19 SARS cov for infection now um, if you see uh, the, the organization is sanofi aventis so um, this is a company uh, you know, the website is given here Allergonon um, Pharmaceutical, based in Canada, they have been uh, studying this particular drug uh, for or developing this particular a very old drug as a new therapeutic to fight COVID uh, against COVID-19. And possibly uh, the mechanism of action is same by interacting with sigma R1 and R2 receptors. Um, uh, the viral entry is prevented apparently. So uh, when you see this presentation, you probably can visit this uh, website and essentially also take a look at um, uh, what is the thought process like, how, uh, what exactly they are doing, and apparently they would be updating this as the trials progress, uh, and eventually uh, you will get updates uh, about the uh, this particular uh, campaign. So again, uh, a similar question which we asked uh, previously for uh, the tetracycline antibiotic, uh, iravacycline. So will other sigma receptor ligands be effective as anti sars cov agents? Very much, pretty much actually, if you see, because uh, all, all these classes of drugs, which are uh, say neurotransmitter antagonists, dopamine, uh, norepinephrine, um, even the beta blockers, alpha blockers and whatnot, because they follow a typical um, uh, pharmacophore uh, in them. Uh, this is very, very important uh, to have, uh, it's very important to have a ketanic nitrogen in them. And that's where uh, potentially um, uh, these drugs could be useful for um, anti sars cov uh, agents. Trifluoperazine, which is an antipsychotic uh, drug, which is a dopamine D2 receptor antagonist, can be potentially useful. It is very potent uh, sigma receptor ligand. Then you also have sertraline, which is an antidepressant drug. Uh, uh, you can potentially use this. There is another one, uh, sarizutan, which is again an antipsychotic drug. If you look at the structures, you will find a tannic nitrogen, a tertiary nitrogen somewhere along with the uh, good combination of aromatic rings. So this is how you uh, extend what you know or what somebody else uh, found that out. And you, uh, you, know, you kind of extrapolate that for a generating drug repurposing hypothesis. But merely uh, you know, wishing this won't happen, you really have to dig uh, the literature and uh, find out an evidence for um, this particular uh, hypothesis, a support for these hypotheses, and uh, you might just get lucky because literature is so vast uh, and you get things which you never have imagined. Uh, another interesting example is endomethacin. Now, I'm sure everybody knows what endomethacin is. It's, a, it, it's an NSAID which was uh, launched very, very long ago, 1963. Many of us were not even born by then. A very single, a very nice structure. Um, uh, it's a molecular mechanism of action. Uh, everyone knows it's an, it's an NSAID. It acts as an inhibitor of COX-1, COX-2, and even COX-3. Apart from that, it is also an NADPH oxidase inhibitor. It is useful for pain. And uh, there is another interesting uh, use of uh, endomethacin is for patent ductus arteriosus, which is a congenital malformation, uh, like faulty uh, uh, liver, a uh, faulty uh, heart uh, formation where uh, you know, the, the blood, the pure and impure blood mixes. So to avoid that, uh, endomethacin is used, a very interesting use. Um, organization, many organizations, uh, but then Lundbeck, uh, Lundbeck is actually uh, developing it for um, so-called COVID-19. So uh, there's a very interesting paper, which uh, I have mentioned the DOI here, which was available on a preprint server. So they have tested the affinity or rather efficacy of endomethacin in vitro, uh, that is its anti sars cov 2 activity in vitro. Uh, and of course, in vivo in dogs. Now this is very, very interesting. You, know, you will enjoy this particular um, study. So what they have found out is uh, in vitro studies uh, when they used, uh, when they infected the African green monkey kidney, Vero E6 cells, which is a very uh, typical cell line used for studying anti sars cov 2 activity because viruses cannot survive outside cell. So essentially, you infect these cells, uh, which are very sensitive to, uh, say, sars cov 2 all coronaviruses for that matter. And then, uh, uh, you know, you see uh, whether um, the drug has any effect. If the drug has any effect on 
you know, against the virus, then the sale will survive. Uh, otherwise, if the drug do not have any effect, uh, the, the sale will eventually die. So it's a very simple assay where the help of MTT assay, uh, first you treat with drug and then infect with virus, a particular amount of virus, and eventually uh, you find out whether the drug is effective or not. So they found out the IC50 of endometacin is one micromolar. Now, uh, I'm sure you know endometacin, the dose is very, very small. It's 50 milligram per oral dose. So that produces a Cmax of uh, 7 to 11 micromolar, which is 10 times higher than what you need for killing uh, SARS-CoV-2. And, um, you know, at this particular concentration, or rather up to 500 micromolar concentration of endometacin, uh, the very six cells are uh, absolutely fine. So you can imagine um, the Cmax is already 10 times higher than its IC50, and the cells which have been used for um, testing the anti sars cov 2 activity, they themselves are uh, in a way so highly uh, non toxic, like the endometacin is so non toxic to them. So, uh, what I mean to say is that the effect is solely to uh, attribute it to endometacin. And they essentially also studied uh, endometacin uh, effect in dogs where they uh, infected the dogs with the canine coronavirus, which is uh, more or less similar to what we have uh, right now. Uh, and then they used uh, three uh, treatment regimens, symptomatic treatment uh, plus ribavirin, which is another um, drug which is being uh, sought uh, after for um, the anti-coronavirus or anti-COVID-19 effect, uh, which is highly, uh, I would say, um, highly toxic drug. Um, uh, and then they used eight dogs. And in another one, they use anti canine coronavirus serum, uh, just the way they're using plasma therapy. Then canine hemoglobin, canine blood, immunoglobulin, and interferon, which is antiviral uh, drug or other antiviral agent. And the third treatment was only symptomatic treatment plus endomethacin 1 mg per kg in dogs uh, daily uh, for 20 days. Uh, and that they, they studied in nine dogs. Uh, and then the results showed that um, there was definitely um, uh, significant recovery uh, compared to uh, treatment one, where they used ribavirin, which was toxic. And then, in fact, three drugs, three dogs, they died. Uh, so there was significant difference between endomethacin and the ribavirin therapy. But then there was no significant difference between second two that uh, when you have a cocktail of anti canine coronavirus serum, canine hemoglobin, blood uh, immunoglobulin, interferon, um, the effect is same only with all the similar effect is obtained with uh, endometacin. So you can imagine uh, it's not just in vitro, but in vivo uh, as well, uh, endometacin shown a very, very high promise, right? Um, so, um, but then, then they went ahead and uh, found out uh, how exactly this is happening. So it appears that uh, NSP7, which is the non-structural protein 7 of um, SARS-CoV-2, it was found to interact with uh, PTGES2, that is prostaglandin uh, E synthase 2, which is the uh, which is the protein uh, downstream or enzyme downstream downstream of COX. Uh, it, it converts the uh, PGH2 to um, PGE2. So this particular uh, enzyme, uh, endometacin interacts with this particular enzyme, <clears throat> and uh, essentially. Um, you know, is is uh, is able to uh, curb the uh, journey of uh, SARS-CoV-2. So now this is very very interesting. But then uh, that gives me an idea whether um, other uh, NSAIDs uh, will still be able to show similar effect. But uh, like I said, this is this is an ongoing debate, and uh, you should read uh, the the literature around uh, use of NSAIDs for COVID-19. In fact, on the next slide, uh, I have something uh, for you. So it's very, very, uh, very, very interesting uh, activity. So uh, generating a hypothesis is one, and also generating the logic is another one. And like I said, the, the Nature paper uh, has uh, catalyzed many of these uh, thought processes. And uh, if you read, probably you might also get uh, some very interesting idea. Maybe uh, you know, for some target, you might have worked previously, but then uh, that's where you need to read. Um, so this is um, this is another paper. It says a SARS-CoV-2 human-protein-protein -protein interaction map reveals drug targets and potential uh, drug repurposing. Uh, the DOI is given again. This is uh, this is on preprint server, and uh, you essentially uh, can use it. Uh, read uh, read through this uh, paper. Uh, at least 60 drugs they are mentioned could potentially be anti-SARS-CoV-2 uh, agents. Uh, 
again uh, the same question but like i said um, i would hold on to this i wouldn't say uh, yes you can probably uh, just extrapolate what uh, you know we have talked about previously uh, as far as um, ns ids and covid 19 uh there is a huge debate going on some are saying uh, it's detrimental it will worsen the the, the case uh, of um, uh, uh covid 19 patients but uh, again there are a lot of issues um, basically uh, the nsaid is also have got uh, some immune component involved meaning they in a way delay uh, the recovery uh, or you know, there are some effect on the lymphocytes and also um, nsaid is um, because they inhibit uh, prostaglandin say something like prostaglandin e2 although we know uh, prostaglandin e2 is inflammatory uh, but then uh, in, in some tissues it is actually anti inflammatory so there is a huge uh, jumble up uh, of things but then uh, this is one of the uh, letters to the editor for uh, a very prestigious journal british medical journal which says about uh, non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs and covid 19 uh, and uh, you know if you uh, the the do is given here if you read this letter this fellow has uh, which was posted on 2nd april 2020 this fellow has very interestingly uh, talked about how uh, he supports uh, what like how indomethacin is uh, anti covid 19 very interesting and uh, believe me uh, even if you don't work on covid 19 or even if you don't do on drink purposes but if you like follow the literature you will uh, become a very very uh, evolved researcher just by uh, the knowledge which you gain from reading this thing uh, it's kind of a brush up of what you learned all these years uh, so far uh, this is a very close very interesting uh, case i didn't know about this till yesterday um, i must admit that so this is the drug uh, called trans sodium uh, prosipinate um, very simple drug uh, if you see the structure here uh, it is in uh, phase 3 trials and you will be surprised to see its um uh, mechanism of action the way it acts is uh, it increases the rate of oxygen diffusion to oxygen deprived tissues by about 30% um and uh, this is currently being uh, used or being um, developed as a radio sensitizer for uh, glioblastoma multiforme which is a grade 4 astrocytoma um so what happens is because it's a cns tumor uh, and most of the tumors are highly hypoxic uh, and that become at times it becomes so very uh, impossible to operate they become inoperable uh, even if you want to try radiotherapy because the tissue is hypoxic you don't really see the effect that great so that's where uh, one actually uh, can use this drug which gets into the uh, cns and Uh, increases the oxygen uh, diffusion into those oxygen deprived tissues and the radio sensitization become it becomes it sensitizes that tissue which was earlier hypoxic by uh, increasing the oxygen diffusion sensitive to radiotherapy very interesting thing uh, i am sure 90% of you probably wouldn't know about this um, i mean even i did not know uh, uh so it, in in 2011 it got orphan drug designation status um and it is currently under phase 3 trial for glioblastoma and uh, phase 2 for stroke uh and then interestingly uh, some companies uh, they are developing it as anti coronavirus drug so this is where uh, and this uh, the company name is diffusion pharmaceuticals it is a uh, it's not very old company uh, based in virginia uh, in the united states so if you see uh this is uh, from their uh, website uh, which says that uh, diffusion pharmaceuticals uh, it's it's evaluating pca psc that is the uh, trans sodium uh, propionate uh, against acute respiratory distress syndrome ards in covid 19 patient so they are partnered with uh, university of virginia health and another institute for uh, doing this so now here they are not uh, looking forward to killing the coronavirus uh, or uh, sars cov 2 they are looking at um, uh you know restoring uh, the status of um, the hypoxic status of uh, the severely ill covid 19 patients because uh, there is systemic hypoxemia uh, general lack of oxygen to body tissues and viral vital organs and many times the patients particularly the elderly they die because of multiple organ failures because oxygen uh, you know the, the tissues are uh, hypoxic and that's where or hypoxemic uh, that's where uh, this the utility of this drug uh, comes into picture now this is very interesting like i said uh, you don't have to look for repurposing drugs which essentially will uh, kind of you know kill uh, uh, coronavirus or sars cov 2 you actually can look at um, the other opportunities wherein you can uh, in a way 
control the uh, other symptoms which can be extremely useful for saving the patient while the uh, patient's immune system itself uh, can take care of the virus. So this is uh, this gets much more interesting. Another interesting thing, uh, which is in a way very close to my heart, is uh, this particular drug, Merinecodim. Uh, I haven't really worked on this drug, but the class of um, uh, agents which, uh, by, you know, the same mechanism, which acts by the same mechanism of action, which is human IMPDH2 inhibition. Uh, two of my PhD students worked on um, human IMPDH inhibitors, and we essentially have at least 250 compounds out of which around 20 are uh, very potent or rather uh, nicely potent uh, compounds which inhibit human and PDH2. So uh, I'll, I'll tell you the connection. So basically this drug uh, was in uh, clinical trials for like last eight or nine years, at least five different clinical trials were conducted. It was originally developed by Vertex Pharmaceuticals uh, for a hepatitis C uh, viral infection. So it is still in phase two. So if uh, originally developed for or being developed for HCV infection, so if it turns out to be anti-coronavirus, so then this will be drug repositioning. Whereas uh, for other drugs like Virava, Cyclone, Indomethacin, it will be drug repurposing. So this is the, the difference which I was talking about in the beginning. So what is the logic uh, as far as this particular drug is concerned? So apparently uh, Vertex has given this um, the rights of this drug to other company, which uh, you know, one of the arms of that company is Viral, viral Clear Pharmaceutical based in USA. So what they have found out, again, this is a paper published on a preprint server. The IMPDH inhibitor Merimepodip suppresses SARS CoV 2 replication in vitro. So they have uh, essentially uh, found out uh, from in vitro studies that Merimepodip, uh, this compound essentially is very uh, potent SARS CoV 2 uh, uh, inhibitor. And that's where um, they, uh, in a way, found out that it suppresses replication of a variety of emerging RNA viruses, not just, um, uh, I would say, not just the SARS-CoV-2, but SARS-CoV, MERS, and other uh, viruses, including Ebola viruses. Of course, Ebola, Ebola is not a coronavirus, but then uh, it does uh, inhibit Merimepodi. So now, uh, now this gets uh, very interesting here. Uh, they have found this out in um, in vitro, uh, and then uh, they also found out that the effect was dose dependent, uh, and then eventually they found out that the concentrations as low as 3.3 uh, micromolar significantly reduced the virus cycle, the number of uh, virus particles when the cells were penetrated prior to infection, meaning the drug treatment was happened and then the infection happened. Um, so it, it actually found out that this drug, apart from uh, its effect on uh, human iron produce, now if you look at uh, human iron produce, it's a host protein, it's not a viral protein, okay? So uh, no matter uh, what happens tomorrow, even if the SARS go to uh, develops resistance for some of its own targets, like they, the targets get mutated and the drug which were developed against those, uh, those drugs won't be effective, but because Merinecodib, it acts on a human protein, human IMPDH2, which is useful for guanine nucleotide biosynthesis. So essentially, uh, there won't be a, a probability of development of resistance to Merinecodib, even if other drugs which act on um, the SARS-CoV-2 targets uh, develop resistance, actually. So uh, this is another example of drug repurposing where you are targeting the host protein and not the viral protein. Right. So what I'm trying, so these examples were selected uh, to take you uh, through the journey, like what are the uh, avenues, uh, you, you know, you don't, you just don't want to kill the virus, you want to make your immune system strong, you want to make, uh, uh, you know, uh, take use of, uh, or make use of host proteins for uh, stopping the journey of the virus and many other things. So apparently human IMPDH2 has been demonstrated to interact with non-structural protein 14 or SARS-CoV-2. So again, the same nature paper uh, talks about this particular thing. And uh, one, uh, actually you can use this information. Uh, so there are some methodological uh, or mechanical details here. Uh, I would skip that part. So Merimepodib has been shown to target, uh, now this is, um, so, so again, Merimepodib, uh, again, it's an antiviral drug, uh, originally de being developed as um, uh, the human IMPDH2 inhibitor, uh, uh, which also, uh, because viruses need human IMPDH2 for their replication, um, because the guanine nucleotides are required for uh, the RNA uh, building. So apparently, Merinoprodim also acts on RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, which is a viral protein, right? So now you have got Merinoprodim, which acts on human host protein. You've got Merinoprodim, which also acts on uh, the viral uh, target. 
So now this is um, again very interesting thing, and uh, people have actually shown that uh, it did so for Zika virus. Um, so apparently, it might actually be doing for uh, SARS-CoV-2 uh, RNA dependent RNA polymerase as well, but uh, we don't know for sure. So apparently, uh, <clears throat> Viral Clear. Um, this is the original company, Biospin. And Viral Clear is the uh, arm which is developing uh, this particular drug. So they submitted in vitro data on Mirimicudib and Remdesivir uh, for synergistic activity. Now this is um, very very important. Uh, again, this is another uh, another uh, aspect of uh, you know when it comes to drug repurposing, you don't really have to find out only a drug which can do a job on its own. You might actually uh, have some combination of you know some synergistic drugs which will add to uh, the effect of each other's uh, actions and eventually uh, maybe reduce their uh, dose um, uh, for uh, killing or treating the COVID-19. So this is uh, again a very interesting fact. So again, uh, another important thing is uh, when it comes to drug repurposing, uh, not necessary that what uh, the dose which was used being used for its original indication, the same dose will be uh, useful for a, uh, the new indication, say for COVID-19. So one has to be aware of that thing as well, uh, right? Uh, so coming back to um, uh, after this uh, whole uh, episode started, uh, say after uh, January or so, uh, there are a lot of companies, a lot of uh, people who came forward, like I gave you an example of that nature paper where they openly shared the data without uh, patenting it. So this is an example uh, where the, uh, this company, Excelra, uh, this is the platform. Uh, if you type Excel, right, it will directly take you to this page. Um, and all you have to do is uh, put your details and you can access uh, the database. Uh, so ba basically, this database contains, uh, I think, 125 odd uh, drugs, which they have uh, found out uh, or they have collated this data and came up, uh, came up with the idea that these potential drugs uh, can be repurposed for COVID-19. So those who are new interns or those who would want to uh, understand the thought process behind this, this is an excellent example of uh, all the data, a lot of data into one place, uh, and one should uh, actually take a look at this. In fact, uh, towards the end of my presentation, I will share uh, with you uh, the Excel, Excel sheet where I've uh, taken a few select drugs because it was uh, it was not aligned to copy, so I had to do it individually, and then uh, it took a lot of time. So I have few select examples which were of interest to me, but you can take a look at uh, this data all by yourself. It's very, very interesting. So this is the website given here, but like I said, if you just Google and uh, those guys are very nice, I've already uh, spoken to them and they want to uh, give a demo or so uh, again for this, uh, regarding this. Another interesting thing which uh, very recently came uh, to my notice, uh, this, this, there is this company called OpenEye Scientific. So they have uh, molecular modeling softwares um, uh, for cell, uh, very interesting uh, thing, uh, uh, suite of softwares which they have. Um, so what they have done is uh, <clears throat> they have made, uh, they have carried out the molecular docking of uh, 1.4 billion compounds. Uh, I'm sure you hear, you heard it rightly. 1.4 billion compounds which are synthetically possible. Uh, they have taken these set of compounds from Inamin library, which are like commercial vendors. And they have done this giga docking uh, in one of the uh, viral um, proteins, I think it was uh, this 3CL pro or main protease of SARS-CoV-2. And uh, after doing this, so they have used Amazon cloud services or so, um, and eventually they have uh, came up, they came up with this uh, top 10,000 compounds and that data is available for you to tie your hands on. Um, I mean, uh, <clears throat> if you if you just, uh, uh, the, the website is given here, uh, but if you just tie, type uh, open eye, um, you know, data, giga, giga docking data, it will take you to the website. And you are able to now uh, download the data in the form of an SDF file, as well as the proteins which they have used for docking. So those who are uh, into docking, molecular docking or structure-based drug design, they essentially uh, can be, uh, it can be extremely useful to you. <clears throat> this is, uh, these are like top three compounds which they have shown uh, bound to uh, the SARS-CoV-2 mPro, that is a main protease or 3CL pro, uh, that's another name for that. So now this is extremely important information. So if you have to do it uh, all by yourself for uh, 1.4 billion compounds, so probably you will retire uh, by the time you complete these 1.4 billion uh, compounds. Uh, if you have to do it with your own uh, PC or laptop, which you have. Uh, 
Um, so you can imagine, um, uh, they have, uh, it's, it's, a, it's an amazing uh, effort and they have made all of this available freely for so that people can use it, develop ideas, come up with uh, new uh, molecules. So this is extremely important. The website is given here, so you can try your hands on. Now, this is uh, amazing. I mean, uh, this is probably we're reaching towards the end of the um, uh, session. Um, so this is from uh, somebody called uh, Zeng Lab. Uh, which is um, from University of Michigan, Zang Lab, which is from University of Michigan in uh, USA. Um, so this one is uh, what they have done. So this is a platform. Uh, part of it is seen here. So what they have done is they have solved, or rather, they have developed the crystal structures of all the proteins uh, which are uh, now encoded by uh, the genome of SARS-CoV-2, and. Uh, so basically, these structures, which essentially uh, they have deposited, anybody, you know, once you go to this uh, web page, you will be able to download these structures and you can dock any and everything in those, uh, in these particular uh, structures. Now, this is a great effort because many of these proteins uh, are so new, uh, not all of these crystal structures are known. Although, if you see, uh, probably there are more than 100 crystal structures of SARS CoV 2 proteins. Uh, 3CL Pro, then you've got PL Pro, and then there are uh, other uh, non-structural proteins. So this is a one point uh, stop for you who, uh, who want to understand what, uh, what each of these proteins do. So they have listed very nicely the functions of each of these proteins and solve all the structures. So this is something, it's like, uh, you know, in, in other words, I would say this is, uh, this is kind of an amrut for um, people like us researchers. Uh, Amrut in the sense, uh, it's like everything is ready. All you have to do is just uh, have to drink it, as in work on it, and come up with uh, your own ideas. Uh, no one is stopping you. You can draw and dock uh, some phytochemicals. You can dock some nutraceuticals. You can dock some of the agents which are uh, you know which are found in spices and uh, any anything and everything. So this is an amazing thing uh, which they have done. Um, so this is the information about that. Uh, it's basically 3D structural information and uh, the functions of those things and then the methodology. So I wouldn't worry about this, uh, but you can read through this. Um, so what's the take home message? Um, uh, again, um, you and me can generate rational and meaningful drug repurposing hypothesis. It's not impossible, um, very much possible. It's just that you have to read, read and read. Uh, you can publish these hypotheses in scientific literature. Someone may take it up sooner, very much possible. Again, because uh, you know, getting these compounds tested for um, at least uh, in today's time, maybe six months down the line, there will be a lot of people who would have these facilities. But at this moment of time, very few people, uh, something like uh, National Institute of Virology um, is there. And then the very few labs, they might have uh, facilities like this. In USA, there are few labs, uh, but no idea whether they will really, um, you know, because there is the condition is so worse, uh, there is no, uh, there are no planes flying across. I'm not sure whether uh, they will accept the request, but maybe uh, six months down the line when things uh, become normal, uh, you will be able to actually uh, test your ideas uh, for anti sars cov 2 activity. But till that, till that time, uh, you might actually uh, come up with your own hypothesis um, and you might actually will be able to publish. And uh, the journals, uh, they will, uh, if you have got some real good idea, journals will definitely accept your paper for publication. And somebody might pick up those uh, things. Uh, so you can collaborate with those who are likely to investigate the repurposing, uh, the hypo repurposing hypothesis very much possible. Um, right? um, and then, uh, of course, um, like I said, um, uh, you know, uh, in the process, when you read, read, and read, uh, there's so much to read, um, and then so much to connect the dots. Uh, uh, you essentially will evolve as a better version of your PhD students. So you keep on not necessary. Year student, a four-year student who are studying medicinal chemistry, um, because you are studying these drugs, you might actually come up with some very interesting things. So everything is uh, there in the structure. You just have to uh, keep looking at the structure, and you will find that hidden treasure in the structure, uh, and you might get lucky. So this is an opportunity to do something incredible, which you always wanted to do. And uh, you know, if you uh, if you really dig the literature, uh, there's so much, and with every uh, paper which you read. Essentially, your interest will be more and more. Uh, you know, you, 
uh, there will be a deeper interest in this and you will uh, keep reading more uh, more and more right so uh, about uh, what i have been doing um, in fact i'm very happy to uh, share that on um, uh, 11th may we have filed uh, a second use patent um, uh, to indian patent office uh, with uh, my collaborators uh, godavari biorefineries limited so we have some proprietary molecules uh, from the cancer stem cell project so we have filed a second use patent again uh, the repurposing hypothesis actually uh, came from uh, one of the observations uh, which is published uh, in last two months or so so just as a uh, you know the precaution we have uh, Uh, we have filed a patent. Uh, apart from that, I in last one and a half month, I submitted seven grants, um, um, and hopefully at least one or two of these uh, will get funded. Uh, very interesting uh, things which we have proposed, uh, and in fact, uh, I'm very happy. Um, last month, I gave a similar seminar which was basics of drug repurposing. Uh, so one of the Uh, one of uh, one of the ladies, uh, one of the scientists from CFTRI, she actually um, uh, heard this. Uh, she attended my uh, webinar and then immediately she wrote to me. And then within one month of time, uh, she also got another uh, uh, another collaborator, collaborator of hers, a senior person from Manipal, on board. And in last one month, we have submitted four proposals. Can you imagine? So uh, on the similar uh, analogy, I'm looking forward to at least one or two collaborators, if not more. Um, Coming out of this webinar, uh, I would be happy to um, work with you. Uh, not necessary you have uh, an idea, but if you are willing to learn, I can share uh, the literature. I can, and if we can uh, work together, uh, perfect. Uh, I would love to work with you uh, in anything uh, related to this. And of course, not uh, exactly COVID nineteen because it's too much COVID nineteen, uh, too much of COVID nineteen. Uh, but then we need to work for other uh, purposes too. Um, so that's where uh, I would uh, love to collaborate. Um, and uh, you are welcome to talk to me. Um, and then, like I said, these um, um, my my profile is there on ICT uh, website. Uh, everything is there, um, uh, which uh, which I I have been doing. And apart from that, uh, my contact details, my phone number is there. Uh, so in case you want uh, the same what same number uh, I use at what. I use that WhatsApp number, so if you want to drop me a text or call me, uh, please feel free to do so. Uh, and I would love to really um, uh, work with you um, on, on, on some or the other uh, front. And thank you very much. Um, uh, it was indeed a pleasure um, uh, to to be able to talk to you. And exactly uh, one hour, although I was uh, hoping I would be able to finish uh, in forty five minutes. But I think you are so um, uh, so involved uh, in that because you are so passionate about what you are doing, what you are talking. And that's where uh, at times we um, and that's where we have moderators for. Uh, they did not really stop me in between. Uh, so thank you so much for your time, and I'm sure um, uh, you you will go with the feeling that uh, you did not waste your time. At least some terms which you have heard, uh, at least some things, some new things which uh, you know which you did not know uh, an hour before. Uh, if even if there are one or two people who say that, I would love to. I would be very very happy to have uh, spend um, time on working on this. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Prashant. Am I audible to you? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much for the lucid presentation. uh it's a really comprehensive uh, presentation and uh, thank you very much for letting us uh, know the difference between the repositioning and repurposing this is quite a fascinating term for all of us uh, i must say uh, the repositioning of the drug first of all let me congratulate to you for the filing uh, that us patent that you talked about and then uh, yes. also let me congratulate you for um, uh, submitting almost uh, half dozens of the Uh, proposals <laughs> to the funding agencies on the covid 19 uh, this shows you your passion how compassion uh, comp uh, how uh, how passionate you are uh, for doing your research uh, let me uh, quickly go through the some of the questions that has been uh, arise on the um, front uh, in the chat box uh, yes. uh, if you can able to uh, solve those queries uh, first sure, of sure. all yeah uh, i'll just go through it uh, is there any software to know the drugs which can be repurposed well uh, like i said uh, there are many many uh, uh, 
many many web tools or platforms available suppose if you uh, choose a drug say something like paracetamol right so you want to know what all uh, proteins paracetamol uh, can interact so there is a software or other web tool called uh, swiss admi uh, if you type swiss admi it will take you to the platform but under swiss admi there is something called as um, target phishing uh, platform so all you have to do is just put the smiles notation of your uh, drug and let the um, uh, let the uh, platform or let the tool do its work so it will give you say top 100 uh, possible structures which it it comes it uses some artificial intelligence based system so there are some models behind that so looking at the structural features it will suggest you uh, some of the potential targets with which the the, the drug can interact so not just necessary for uh, covid 19 but you can try this out for anything and everything so if you are working in neuropharmacology if you are working in some um, say cancer area so those tools can essentially be useful for finding out uh, what other proteins um, a drug or a molecule can interact not necessarily a drug and you can uh, in a way generate a repurposing or repositioning hypothesis and come up with um, you know some some starting point where you can evaluate it Uh, using uh, some experimental um, tools, maybe some in vitro assay, or maybe you collaborate with somebody or tell them that this is how you find and you are interested in knowing the uh, the activity. Uh, so would you want to uh, test this compound for so something like that? And people are always ready if you you know if you approach um, at least ninety percent of the. Uh, researchers will uh, reply positively it's just you have to approach uh, uh, you know, politely uh, then yeah that should that should uh, work out actually okay so okay. this app me is one for sure it's, it works very well actually very nicely okay. even for toxicity there is something called as protox2 so if you want to understand whether your compound is likely to be genotoxic or immunotoxic or some other type of, if you want to predict the ld50 uh, for your compound Uh, there is a tool called protox2 so if you google uh, protox2 it will take you there and just explore or if you want to know more you can uh, call me or you can let me know i'll uh, i'll help you with uh, what exactly needs to be done to uh, refer to that particular platform there are many many tools but then these two are uh, very good actually. okay the next question is quite uh, interesting why countries are not collaborating on this uh, repurposing front well uh, there are uh, see like i said uh, uh, there are examples south korea has become the hub and lot of uh, people uh, they have actually gone to south korea and uh, tried to collaborate with those universities uh, i'm sure in india also uh, there are uh, people who are collaborating particularly uh, i tell you my example uh, niv national institute of virology uh, now they have been very secretive uh, i mean don't quote me anywhere but then uh, i tried to write uh, many uh, researchers uh, uh, on their email addresses from their publications even i tried to collaborate or rather uh, tried to send uh, linkedin uh, links they never accepted so they have been very secretive maybe it's their mandate or something like that but then uh, all the attempts have been um, really uh, futile in fact i uh, approached our vc professor pandit uh, as requesting him if uh, dr marshalkar could um, intervene because dr marshalkar is uh, ict chancellor so if you can help but then again there also uh, nothing happened so in a way uh, uh, there are uh, because the situation is so grave uh, i'm sure there are instructions or mandate from government uh, uh, restricting um, the uh, data sharing something related to yeah, research because it's uh, it's a potential bio weapon but then um, you know let, let uh, next two months pass and uh, there will be all sorts of collaborations happening i'm sure on the country level also uh, there are collaborations happening it's just that uh, that information is not there in the public domain but like i said uh, there are many examples which i quoted in my um, presentation so there are companies which have been collaborating uh, to find things out uh, and then uh, believe me uh, it's just a uh, few months and uh, the next six months there will be few more uh, labs which essentially will be equipped with um, uh, you know uh, this kind of uh, uh, tools available or studies uh, which can be uh, tested which collaboration is possible it's just the situation is so uh, kind of uh, this lockdown and then, uh, but then let uh, the storm pass uh, and then you know everything will be available so just uh, so that's where you need to prepare prepare for those uh, that situation say uh, two months or six months down the line uh, suppose if you have a compound uh, people are ready to test so why not start working on that from today itself so that you have something very interesting and believe me even if one person comes with one very interesting hypothesis 
all we need is um, you know out of 100 hypotheses if one works we will have one one good drug um, and and some of these uh, repurposed drugs they are available in the market uh, you know you can directly go and buy but then of course i wouldn't advise you to go for indomethacin i wouldn't advise you to go for clomastin because these are still uh, uh, you know they have shown uh, activity but then it is still to be uh, reendorsed although some of these drugs are extremely uh, non toxic but then uh, you know as a researcher you can generate these hypotheses and uh, push the science uh, in the front direction and uh, contribute to the betterment of the humanity i think that's more important than uh, uh, you know anything uh, you know, any monetary gains yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, doctor let me add one thing uh, on that note uh, there is a one call special call uh, which is a collaborative call for us and india uh, on the dst yeah. Yeah. yeah that means uh, countries are officially collaborating yes, yes, yes. Uh, for the yeah. but then uh, i think the, the last date was yesterday 15th of may uh, but if you see the amount was uh, awfully uh, low it was only like uh, 50 lakhs in one crore uh, what happens in one crore nothing actually if you really want to do <laughs> good research you have to have at least uh, two to three uh, you know crores uh, funding okay. uh, but then uh, you know the conditions were uh, awfully uh, complicated you have to have a company on board you have to have somebody in us um and collaborator yeah collaborator and in such a short period of time where they are also struggling there uh, themselves they are in lockdown i don't know how uh, you know uh, people how willing people would be but of course uh, you have to keep trying uh, nothing should deter you um so yeah okay uh, let me interrupt you uh, as we are running short of time we'll go for the yes, next sir. one how we can yeah. judge on target and off target uh, repurposing well uh, again it's uh, uh, see now uh, because we are mostly dependent on the literature for uh, something like uh, on target uh, or other repurposing uh, hypothesis and of course you can work on um, uh, i would say uh, the uh, computational drug, uh, drug repurposing maybe ligand based approaches i have published a couple of papers uh, one on ebola virus other one on one on anti inflammatory compounds so it all depends uh, as to uh, what exactly you want suppose if i want to find a compound uh, which have uh, covid 19 uh, anti covid 19 or other anti sars cov 2 so uh, because there nothing is known about uh, like not a so, lot of information is known about sars cov 2 so i probably will use uh, a drug which is uh, from human um, uh, in the human side or maybe uh, working on the other Uh, protein so if it work if there is no same protein pre- present in uh, say a virus uh, for that matter sars cov 2 so then i probably will use uh, uh, an antibacterial drug or any drug which is anti inflammatory drug when i use it for uh, totally unrelated target of your face of target repurposing and many times what happens is uh, one of the methods of um, uh, knowing or other generating repurposing hypothesis is genomic based So basically, you take a look at uh, genomics data, and uh, we all know for sure that uh, you know every drug has, on an average, uh, 70 different side effects. And if you are talking about small molecule drugs, so each of these small molecule it produces these 70 different side effects by interacting with off target. So it's possible that from uh, studying this genomics, so if I am uh, looking at, say, my uh, compound is uh, my anti-inflammatory compound is also killing uh, cells. So it might have some involvement in um, say uh, the cell cycle so then in that case i would uh, probably repurpose it for a cell cycle so in that case it's an off target repurposing because i am repurposing it for its other activity not on the intended target or main target yes, uh, but then on some other target so the the, the concept is very clear so if you are uh, say like impdh inhibitor like merimepodib so in this case it's on target repurposing but then it's a uh, again it's the same target but i'm using it for other indication that is say uh, antiviral or anti uh, covid 19 effect other thing is merimepodib uh, merimepodib also uh, inhibits rdrp that is rna dependent rna polymerase rdrp so in that case it becomes uh, off target repurposing meaning it is supposed to interact on human iron pdh which it does but in addition to that it also interacts with uh, rdrp so then it becomes an off target repurposing so with okay, all that for that we can use uh, we can use uh, some uh, software uh, docking software all that yes 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 and in fact uh, there are many many softwares uh, for something called as um, um blind docking or reverse docking so in typical uh, docking uh, what you have you have one protein and say uh, 100000 drugs 
but in other case that is reverse docking you have only one drug and you have like 100000 proteins or maybe 1000 proteins so what the software does is it will go take that drug and it will go and bind wherever it finds pockets in any of the proteins it will go and uh, dock it so that's where uh, one has to it's, it's all uh, it's just that the data has to be interpreted clearly or properly okay. so reverse docking is uh, another very interesting area and there are platforms available for reverse docking so if you Google it like reverse docking, uh, you will be able to get in there. Or if you need some more information on reverse docking, I can share one of my review articles and uh, provide you with some information uh, as far as where you can actually try and look at uh, reverse docking. So that's uh, an interesting. Hey, doctor, uh, the last one uh, yes. from Ashish Kaida, one of the listener. Uh, question is, uh, uh, the research article has already been published. The FDA approved drug, Ivermectin inhibits the replication of SARS-CoV-2 in vitro which is published yes. in Antiviral Research Elsewhere Journal, uh, yes. Volume 178 recently, in the, it will be coming in June. Okay, yes. it claims that a single treatment able to uh, affect uh, um, around a 5,000 fold reduction in the virus at 48 yes. hours only in yes, the same yes, region. In spite having such potential for repurposing, why any of the pharma company has not shown much interest in testing the ivermectin clinically? Well, well, that's that's our perception because we don't see anything in the literature, but people are working in background. Like I said, uh, I gave you an example of Novalir Pharma. So they are working on some drug for sure. Uh, you know, if I dig the literature, I probably will be able to find out because they have clearly said that, uh, uh, you know, the, it has come from South uh, Korea. So there are only finite number of uh, drug repurposing campaigns uh, which originated from South Korea. But they're not talking about it uh, because they don't want to make things open for others so that uh, others will also start and nobody can stop because uh, if th this is an old drug which is already available in the market so what is the commercial advantage for nova lead so that's where uh, they're not really opening of course that uh, talking about uh, the, you know, they're saying that if they tell the name then people will rush to the pharmacy buy those drugs and uh, you know it can use uh, can result in indiscriminate use which anyways happened uh, for hydroxychloroquine also. Uh, even I dared uh, one day, just before the lockdown, I went into one pharmacy uh, and I asked him hydroxychloroquine. He said, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you can imagine uh, <laughs> people read this information and then eventually uh, people yes, now, yes, yes. Are, um, uh, of those uh, 500, 2000 participants, a lot of people will go buy clemastin, a lot of people will go buy uh, endomethacin and keep it <laughs> just in case they need it. Uh, which is still okay, as in um, I wouldn't endorse uh, the use of it because these are relatively safe drugs, uh, like antihistamine drugs, they're not really so bad uh, you know, as such, unless you take them in very, very large amount. So, um, yeah, uh, I mean, it, the, it's, the literature is open to everyone and people can, uh, people are working in silence for sure. Uh, but like for Nova Lead, uh, because uh, they are supported by Tata and it's a company, they have to uh, create a news because they got FDA approval just in their four days uh, from Indian FDA. Because, okay. uh, yes, yes, that yes. was the second uh, such application submitted to Indian FDA. Uh, okay, doctor. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We are running short of time. There are hundreds of uh, uh, question, um, uh, like uh, questions and uh, compliments, I must say. Yes. Uh, the the total uh, summary is uh, this is a very informative session and uh, uh, this is a totally a new insight in uh, drug repurposing. Uh, uh, this is uh, why because most of the people uh, don't know these uh, drugs which you have uh, like uh, presented yes. recently. Believe me, I did not know some of them uh, as well <laughs> till yesterday. So yeah. I wouldn't say. Yes, yes, yes. Now so. let me conclude the session with the formal vote of thanks. Uh, uh, from the management of DBCOP and all the organizer team, uh, we are very much thankful, Dr. Prashant, uh, to uh, spare uh, the time uh, for us and uh, uh, very much thankful for the lucid and informative presentation. And uh, a pro clear take home message is there uh, as always with your presentation. So, thank you, thank you very much, Prashant, uh, from all of us uh, that you have uh, presented a very nice uh, presentation on the COVID uh, repurposing of the drug. And it is very informative, and uh, new insights are there. I mean, so on the on behalf of uh, all the our team, special mention uh, with the principal Dr. Mahaz Ma'am, uh, principal Dumure sir, our management uh, president Manoj sir, and uh, technical team Vinod Thakre sir, Sachin Mure sir. They all worked uh, very hard to make it possible. 
thank you so much this is probably the biggest i have ever delivered so thank you so much for uh, making that audience available i'm sure even if some students get inspired uh, believe me all the hard work which has gone from all of us in organizing as well as in preparing for this uh, presentation that yeah. is going to be uh, worth mm -hmm. of worth it actually believe me that's uh, Well, let me announce so one thing uh, for sure for the audience that uh, they can uh, they will be having the ppts of the session because lot many hundreds of the messages are there in the box in the chat box that they are asking for your ppt i will i will, I will share both the ppts uh, okay. feel free to uh, talk to me write to me uh, i would love to hear from you and uh, in case uh, there uh, there is some opportunity to collaborate i would love to i will always be open to collaborate okay. Over to you, Madam Ma'am. If you can. Hello. Ah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Prashan sir. Thank you for such an informative lecture. And your yes, uh, slides were really very much informative. Thank you, thank you very much for sharing uh, for share, uh, sharing time for us. It's over to you, Nitin sir. Thank you very much, Dr. Prashan sir, for your valuable inputs in today's webinar. Uh, we'll be looking forward for uh, your cooperation in future too. Thanks a lot from the visit. Always, always, always. Any time, yes, any time. Yes. I'm just a call away. Yes, yes. Thank you, thank, thank you, you very much. And uh, again, thank one you. important announcement for the all the delegates uh, who have already registered. There is a morning session tomorrow. Uh, there are two sessions uh, tomorrow. Uh, the morning session will start on uh, 11 a.m. Uh, sharply, uh, which is for of uh, Piyush Dr. Piyush Shankar Sir, Analytic uh, Lab, Analytic Research Lab. So all uh, I'll, I'll be happy to. Uh, have we all uh, on that for, uh, platform so thank you very much uh, uh, prashant sir and all the delegates you may leave now thank you very much thank you so much bye bye thank you thank you thank you revise karo lagen message mo ha अगर किसी को कोई हेल्प चाहिए तो मुझसे कांटेक्ट कर सकते हैं मुझसे कांटेक्ट करने के लिए आपको आई बटन पे क्लिक करना होगा वहां पर मेरी इंफॉर्मेशन आपको मिल जाएगी क्योंकि दोस्तों वीडियो को देखने के लिए अगर आपको वीडियो लग, अच्छा लगा है तो लाइक कीजिए अगर आप चैनल में नए हैं तो सब्सक्राइब कीजिए अगर आपको कुछ कमेंट में कहना है तो कमेंट कीजिए फीडबैक देना है तो अगर आपको लगता है वो चैनल हेल्पफुल है तो इसको शेयर कीजिए जय हिंद जय भारत